Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a swatching video. I'm just going to be swatching a new palette that I'm trying to break in with a bunch of new watercolors. I thought I'd share this because I still get a lot of views on my last swatching video, so I think you guys like it. And I actually really love watching this type of video, so hopefully you do like them. I'll link my other video on swatching my main palette, like my big 48 palette, um, in the iCard if you haven't seen that yet. Most of my main watercolors that I use are like Schmika Horadam and Daniel Smith, but this time I'm swatching a full Holbein watercolor palette. I put the I put the tubes here just for aesthetic reasons because they look nice, but I've already poured uh, the pans out. So sorry if you enjoy that. It is kind of fun to watch that, but I find it very stressful to film that. <laughs> so I just already pre-prepared everything. I haven't popped them into the tree because I want to do two swatches. I want to swatch out my limited palette of the Holbein colors on one little card, which I have all prepared. Um, and then I also want to swatch out like everything all organized by color on the big paper. So we'll be doing the mini palette first and I'll just get these tubes out of the way. If you're not familiar, Holbein paint is like a Japanese paint brand and it's artist grade paint. I'm not affiliated or associated with them, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> these days you always have to say though. So when I already do my prep, I of course find a place to put my paints. This time it is this cute paint tin that I got from Taobao. Um, I buy a lot of stuff from Taobao uh, just because it's really accessible where I live. I live in Singapore, although I'm American originally, so I'm not from here, I just live here. Uh, so these are really, really cheap and the quality is the same as the kind of, you know, non-brand tins that you can find on Amazon as well. Like all of them are about the same quality and they have really cute colors now so i couldn't resist getting a pink tin i also have like a, a light blue tin uh well actually it's more vivid blue tin and i have this really cool uh purple tin purple is my favorite color and this is like one of my favorite shades too so when i saw that i was like yes i have to get this and i'll actually be uh putting the limited palette here so that's what I'll be swatching first. So um, yeah, when I first start out to fill the pan, since I didn't show that, I just thought I'd explain it real quick. I of course take my half pan, empty half pans, which I also get from Taobao, they're like really cheap. Um, and I put a label on the bottom. I use a label maker, which looks like this. It's a Brother P-Touch, I guess it's called. I can only assume because it's like written like that. I didn't buy this myself. Um, my husband bought it so it and we bought it quite a few years ago so i'm not quite sure what it is it does say p touch at the back though um and it's really nice like it, i've never considered myself like i hope this is all in frame sorry <laughs> i never considered myself like a a person who enjoys having labels or making labels i don't know people always have that joke stigma with it but it works really well for this and we actually bought this because we were moving many many years ago and um, it's been helpful since every once in a while. Uh, it's really nice for the pans though because the top layer is kind of waterproof so it doesn't like smear, smear, it doesn't smear when I get a little bit of water on it which sometimes happens and um, it's, it's handy to make sure that I know what the color is in case the pans fall out of order and I really do hope all that it's in frame. I'm kind of recording this blind because the camera is above and I cannot see it. But um, yeah, so let me show you an up close. So yeah, let me show you up close. Uh, this is what the labels look like. I always put an H for this. Well, this area is for like the brand. So if it was Schmincke, it'd be an S. If it was Daniel Smith, it'd be a D. For Holbein, it's an H. And then I try to put the pigment number and also the name of the color, but I usually prioritize the name over the pigment information, but I find it nice to have all of that. I only have about eight, eight spaces on both layers before it's too wide. Um, and I didn't put it on the sides just because I thought it, it's a bit more space at the bottom. So that's how I do um, my pans. I just thought I'd share that in case that's helpful to anybody. 
And yeah, let's just get into swatching. This one is so awkward to set up though. <laughs> I think I'll just take these down first so I don't get anything confused. It's so awkward to show a video where you have like one of these tins visible because like this tray is just always in the way. Like if I could just have this part and take these off temporarily, it would make filming so much easier, if you know what I mean. If there's anybody who does art videos watching this, uh, sorry, I keep adjusting, <laughs> uh, and they have a solution for that, let me know. Sorry for the chair sounds. Um, I'm going to be swatching this with a new brush also, if I can find it. I recently bought a few silver black velvet brushes to try out. I only bought a number four and this quarter inch round. Round what? Why did I say that? It's a number four round and this quarter inch flat. Um, yeah, and I'm just trying to figure out if I like it or not. I, I'm not wowed by them yet. I was kind of surprised by that because so many people talk about these watercolors, sorry, th these brushes, <laughs> um, that I thought I would be kind of more wowed by them. I'm just spraying everything so that the paint can uh, be ready. Um, but I'm not super wowed by them yet. I just think they're nice. They work well so far. Um, the only other two things I've noticed when it comes to the, the black velvet brushes are some of the fur, the hair does kind of stick out funny, but it does snap back into place when it's wet, so it's fine. And the only other thing I noticed is that these are uh, squirrel hair, but unlike the Princeton Neptunes, which is my my like how but that's what I had before so that's like the base I'm kind of comparing it at they don't get super floppy when they're wet which is really nice because that's the thing I really hate about the Princeton Neptunes so yeah um so this is my limited palette this is the one that I'm going to put aside and use a lot I'm just doing a warm and a cool of each primary and the first color I picked is cadmium lemon yellow I had actually picked a different color. Um, I actually bought these. I pretty much. I think I have 22 watercolors today, and I had purchased them in like three three goes, pretty much. Um, I had a few from my main palette, and I they moved them from my main palette into this one because I just thought it'd be kind of nice to have all the Holbein colors in one spot, and. Uh, then, sorry, I, I cannot think while doing things. Um, I, I, I went to the store thinking that I would buy some watercolor for a limited palette. And when I got there, I got like really mesmerized by all the blues. So I ended up buying way too many blues. And I couldn't find a cool red that I liked at all. So I ended up walking away without that, <laughs> which was dumb. And then, uh, Later, when I did a bit of research, I found out that the yellow and the warm red I picked were actually just not good. So I ended up having to go back, and this time when I went back to pick up more watercolors to finish this setup, um, I decided to do more research. I watched more videos, I tried to get more opinions on it, tried to see if I could figure out better what a cool and a warm color of would be best to pick and i think i'm going to skip each color and come back and um i realized that the color i had picked was totally wrong so i have a few others <laughs> that i bought and then while i was doing that i was like i might as well just buy like a few more because they're so inexpensive here these whole buying paints that i just treat myself and try a few more colors that i was always like kind of wanting to add to my palette and it kind of went overboard because of that so this one is the the warm red in my limited palette set it's vermilion 
The Vermilion uh, by Holbein. They have a hue as well as like the like actual vermilion paint. And I ended up going for the actual vermilion. The hue would have been much cheaper. I, I washed too much of this paint off. Oh well. The hue would have been cheaper, but I went for the full on vermilion because I just kind of was like, why not just go for it? <laughs> um, the reason I picked Holbein to be this experimental palette to play around with is because um, it's just really inexpensive where I live for these paints. And once I started like looking at their catalog, I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to get that color. And I've always kind of wanted to try that color. And this color is really pretty and it's not expensive, so I might as well go for it. It was like one of those. It's like really hard to control myself around pretty paints. Um, let's see, this is the warm red, er, warm, warm blue, sorry, the warm blue, which is ultramarine deep. I never script my videos and I always forget what I said. So if there's anything I'm talking about and you're like not following along, feel free to ask in the comments. It's totally cool. <laughs> I hope I didn't get too much water just now. But yeah, I just couldn't help myself and ended up getting a bunch more colors. Um, the original like light yellow that I had picked was the Imadelazone yellow, which you'll see later. And then later I realized, because I was trying to do some, some swatches of color and I'm just like, these are just not mixing great. Did I do something wrong? Because I've never had to put together like a palette myself, which was the experiment. Um, and then I realized from one video, uh, it was a live stream. I think it was Otto Kano who did the live stream. She was saying that that color is actually a middle yellow, not a cool yellow. So it's like, oh, I knew I should have picked lemon yellow. <laughs> But I was trying to avoid picking lemon yellow because um, I already have a lemon yellow in Schmincke color. So I was trying to pick something that was a bit different but also like fit the bar, which is probably where I went wrong. And I feel like this is not enough pigment. I just did not get enough pigment in this one. Let's see if I can add to that. Uh, but, um,. Yeah, I'm losing what I was just talking about. Oh, so that's why I went back and got the Cad Yellow Lemon. Um, I figured I'd go for the Cad Yellow Lemon instead of just regular Lemon Yellow because, you know, something slightly different, but it still, still works. And it, it's much better though. Like, actually this pigment in general looks really nice. It's really... It really lays flat and makes a really nice wash and it's definitely a lot cooler when I saw it side by side with the other color I picked. So those are my warm colors and I'm gonna go back and do oh you know I always swap the yellows like I know the difference with the yellows between the warm and cool <laughs> but I always swap them in order I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Let me double check. <laughs> okay we could be in frame more. Like I always want to put the cool yellow with the warm uh, other colors. Like I just always seem to go that way. So this is the, the warm yellow, which is the Cad Yellow Deep. But yeah, like I definitely struggled trying to pick appropriate light, or not light, I always say light and dark, I don't know why, um, <laughs> warm and cool colors for this limited palette. Um, and it's like I can, I can identify warm and cool for the yellow and red within, you know, I, I'm not going to be perfect at it since I don't do it often, but mostly I can tell when I look at the colors. 
But when it comes to blue, I actually really struggle with that. I really struggle with figuring out which one is a warm blue and which one is a cool blue. So the first time I went to the store and I hadn't done as much research first time I went there to buy these paints to make this experimental palette. Um, I ended up, I think with like three warm blues. I was like, oh no, I'm not sure if any of these would work. <laughs> so I actually ended up asking the person at the store, like, uh, do you know what a cool blue is? And the only answer I could find online and the only answer they gave me was phalo blue. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of phalo blue. It has such a pretty color, but it's so staining. But I was like, all right, fine. I'll just get phalo blue just to be on the safe side. <sighs> But I do still wonder if there's other colors I could use. Like, I wonder if teal, like a teal color can be a cool blue. Does anybody know? Anybody in the comments actually know which ones work for cool? Definitely let me know. But yeah, the whole point of this palette was I wanted to experiment more with limited colors, a limited palette. And Holbein is very inexpensive where I live. There's a shop called Straight Arts Co. in Singapore. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. Shoot, I washed off all my pigment. Um, <laughs> I just shop there. And they have, like, actually the, the most inexpensive watercolor in Singapore. So if you're looking for, like, a really good deal, definitely um, check out that shop because they have two brands that are really inexpensive here which is the white knights they have the pans which i know most of them are three dollars each i was actually kind of considering getting those but i'm not sure i will yet and then they have these holbein paints which uh series a tubes are um i think they're three dollars ninety cents plus there's probably tax on top of that so it's really inexpensive like um the Schmincke Hordam, Daniel Smith, those kind of paints, uh, also Winsor Newton Professional, they all start at like seven to nine dollars for a Series A. So with Holbein, it's so much cheaper, um, at least where I live. And like the Series A and B are the same price, and the Series C and D are like five dollars twenty cents. And then the Series E and F, which I did buy two that were E, one is E, one is F. Um, was only seven dollars, which is still cheaper than the series a and the other brands So it kind of got me feeling giddy because I'm like, oh this whole Catalog is wide open for me. <laughs> it's so affordable So that's why I wanted to kind of dive in and play with these colors. By the way, this color is Quinecnor magenta When it came to the cool red like I would said before I didn't love the colors that were there and the the one that I ended up going for was the Kanagrom actually because I it was either Otokano's live stream or it was like in liquid color, Denise, one of her videos, maybe, I think it was one of those two. I was watching their video and they, they had used Kanagrom Magenta for the cool red. So I kind of went for that, even though I'm not a super fan of this color. I feel like it's one of those colors that I just ended up having um, multiples of in different brands and uh, I don't know it's not my favorite I actually much more prefer my Schmincke Hordam Carmine but Holbein's Carmine um, is made with a different pigment and after I did a little bit of research I found out that um, even though it says it's light fast it's made using a pigment that is not light fast so I, I kind of messed this up too much water up here <laughs> um oh no oh, shoot i'm watching the wrong color oh don't mess that up okay let's just i'm swatching the wrong blue no it's fine though um so i couldn't go ahead and just get the carmine like i'd like to so <laughs> Uh, there was another option. I forget what color it was, but I just didn't like the color. 
it was too light. It just didn't have a lot of pigment load, so I went with the um, the quinacridone magenta after all. They did have one, like the Schmincke Carmine, which is my favorite to use. I really hope I didn't mix up these blues. Um, this one is definitely Theolo Blue. That one by Schmincke is made with PV19. And the only PV19 that Holbein has is Quinacridone Violet, which I actually did get. But I was a little disappointed that they didn't have another one. Oh yeah, that's definitely feelable. Again, I'm, I'm pretty rambly in this video and I might not remember what I'm saying and then repeat it, so sorry about that. <laughs> and also if I'm talking and I never explain properly, just, just let me know, I'll, I'll explain it in the comments. Because I've actually recorded this video already and then I got all anxious and deleted it. And now I'm trying again. So I've actually said this stuff a few times and that's why it's hard to remember. If you know what I mean. See, phthalo blue is a really pretty color. It's just, I don't know, I'm kind of bored with it. Um, I kind of want to experiment with other colors, but I'm just going to do this first and then I can adjust my limited palette as I get braver. By the way, this is the phthalo blue yellow shade, which I got because it sounds interesting. It's like, oh, what's, what's the difference between yellow shade and the usual phthalo blues? But I think I remember hearing someone say it's just another wording for green shade. So yeah, that's my limited palette. Uh, the only thing I'm, the, the, maybe I should try to add more color to the ultramarine deep recently the watercolor set that I had reviewed just made me really excited to play around with very limited palettes of just like six colors like a split primary palette and that's why I went out and started to play with these It's something that I'll definitely be um, playing around with in my sketchbook and trying to learn a bit more about mixing and watercolor. I think it's been really helpful to play around like that. So um, I wanted to have one swatch just for when I pop these pans into here and then I'm going to also swatch them in the regular palette. I was actually thinking of just like for the regular palette, putting them off to one side and then just using it. But, and I also thought of putting, you know, more paint into more pans. So I'd have two pans, but I just think that's wasteful. I'd rather just kind of transfer it as I want it. So yeah, that's all finished. Put that aside to dry and start over. I had to rearrange. By the way, the backing cards that I made here, the swatching cards, these are made with uh, B paper. 100% cotton. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm just getting it from the drawers under my table. I bought this last time when I ordered from Blick. Let me get this in view. Um, when I ordered like the brushes and stuff, I also ordered this from Blick. And it was actually pretty inexpensive. Like it's really inexpensive for this big thing of paper, which is crazy and very helpful, especially since it's cotton paper and I've been wanting to use more cotton nowadays. Um, but it also wasn't too expensive to ship it from Blick to Singapore, which was very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. But I don't ship it directly. Um, you can actually get them to ship it to you if you pay. But I find that too expensive. I use a forder. So like I just ship things to within US, which is usually free if you order a certain amount and then I ship it onward to Singapore with my forder and it's actually crazy cheap. So I'm really happy with that situation. Even the paper was super affordable. So, oh yeah, I need to rearrange this first. Um, so lemon yellow would definitely be the lightest. Then the imidalazone. 
tag yellow. And I'm gonna leave them popped out until we're finished just so I can easily check the color and like tell you what color it is while I swatch it because I think that's the best thing about watching swatching videos is when people can like tell you what color it is and then swatch it so you could see it and see if that's something you would want to buy yourself, you know? That was super helpful when I was picking out these colors. I would definitely say if you're going to buy colors of anything, markers, watercolors, highly suggest doing more research because when I went to the store the first time, I did a lot less research and I just kind of hemmed and hawed and ended up with a few colors that just didn't even work. <laughs> and then when I went back the second time, I did a whole lot more research and I was very, very sure of everything I bought. So I was really happy with that experience. Um, let's see. Let me take the failed attempt. No, that was rearranged different. Okay, I'm just gonna fast forward over this part and I'll be back with you guys after we've arranged everything. And by the way, look at how many failed attempts I've done at this. Oh my gosh, anxiety, please leave me alone. <laughs> Okay, all set up. Um, I think I'm gonna leave a gap here and a gap here just because I am missing two and I'm not going back to buy more watercolors yet. So I'm fine with leaving it at missing two. Uh, and it would kind of separate between these like skin tone-ish colors and the yellows, reds, then blues, purple, and earth tones here. I like to keep my yellows and blues like further away if possible <laughs> um, because my biggest pet peeve when it comes to watercolor is a dirty yellow. I really, really, really hate when my yellows get dirty. It makes me so annoyed. <laughs> so I try to keep them further away. I feel like it's still really close, but it'll be fine. There is a gap, but sometimes, you know, there is splatter. So that gets so annoying. So yeah, let's, let's do this again, but with the whole set. Uh, let me check if everything's in frame first. Okay, so the first color again is the easiest to swatch ever, the cadmium yellow lemon. By the way, um, since I did pour these off camera, uh, the colors did pour really well. Like, the only thing I really do when I pour paints is I just pour them in. I don't, I don't add anything. I know some people suggest to add like, what is it, like glycerin or gum paste or something? <laughs> I'm not sure which. Uh, but I never really bother with that. I just pour them in and see how it goes. And uh, I have noticed sometimes people, you know, let others know when they use the paints if there's any shrinkage or cracking. So I did notice with these paints that especially the yellows cracked, shrunk a little bit. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I'm mixing up my words. Um, only a tiny bit like from the sides they came in a bit so there's a gap on all the sides um, so if that's something you're worried about you know just FYI I also did see some cracking uh, there's a tiny little crack that appeared in the cobalt blue but the oh, I should show you this close up sorry for the chair sounds again the raw sienna here uh, cracked like crazy but like it's not popping out, it's not like that bad. So just, just so you know, if you're curious, most of these dried shiny too, but some of them dried kind of matte, which I think is kind of interesting. Although these paints are like considered artist quality and they're labeled as artist quality, I don't think they're like the best paints you can buy. Um, Especially since I already did some playing around with these colors in my sketchbook uh, next to another uh, watercolor that I had played around with. And I could see that these are just not as bright. They're just not as nice. But I definitely think if you can get them at a good price, 
they're worth it to play around with. They still work great. And it could also be the colors I was playing around with were just not compatible because <laughs> that was when I was trying to make the first, uh, I think it was seven colors I bought work together. And that just was not going to happen. <laughs> I couldn't even get a, a good purple with the colors I had brought first. So, uh, definitely not a good idea. But I'm still learning. I think it's fun to experiment though. Like in the past, I feel like I've changed my mindset about watercolors a lot since I started using the watercolors. And even since I last made the last swatching video, I think I've learned a lot and I've changed my idea about a lot of things since then. Um, I have actually been using watercolor since 2015 now, but it's off and on because I also like to use markers um, and other mediums. So, you know, oh, by the way, that color was the Imidalazone yellow, if am I saying that right? It's PY154. So you can see that this was definitely way like it, when you see it next to the, the color, the other color, you'll see that it's very middle. Um, and this one is definitely a lot cooler. But um, what was I saying? <laughs> Someone needs to be here to tell me what I was talking about. Oh, I've changed my mind about a lot of stuff and I've just learned a lot. Um, in the past, I, I, I do occasionally go through um, things where I try to be more mindful of what I buy. Um, and try not to buy too much, but there's also times when I'm just really in the mood to play around and experiment. So recently I just, I did this review for some watercolors and it just made me really curious about other brands and what they offer and uh, probably shouldn't have washed all of that pigment off. And um, curious about different pigments and combinations because when I was looking at those colors I thought to myself that there's no way these colors are gonna work together they're like just not my favorite I don't enjoy this but the more I use them the more I got kind of excited because I was like oh wow I just realized that this color actually has really interesting properties and it's really fun to use and I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't actually kind of forced myself to use them and uh, it just made me kind of curious to play around with other brands and other colors like that unlock the their properties and really get to know them better if that makes sense and that one is the cad yellow deep which is my warm red so you can see it's definitely a very middle red it's like not really cool or warm but I feel like when it's next to this it looks very warm doesn't it <laughs> this one is the vermilion again Let's see if I can swatch this a little bit better I always have a, a bit of problem with swatching this vermilion like I always feel like I can get good pigment when I lay it on thickly, but then like uh, pulling it down. Sorry, I cannot think while I do stuff. <laughs> uh, I feel like the pigment gets lost. So I think if I just don't wash it out fully, I can get a much better swatch. Sometimes when I, cause I'm trying to talk, so the video is interesting. Um, I just can't swatch well because I do something stupid like rinse all of the pigment off my brush. It's hard to pay attention and talk at the same time. So I'm trying not to be too anxious about everything that I'm saying that doesn't make sense because half the conversation's only in my head, if you know what I mean. Yeah, see that looks so much better than my previous attempt. So I have now been using watercolors since 2015. That is, so I think it was 2015 September when I first tried, started trying to figure out watercolor. And it's been quite a few years now. This one's the Cad Red Deep. 
so many years now it's crazy kind of makes me want to go back and look at my old paintings and see how far I've come I don't feel like there's like a huge visual difference it's more like how I feel like the comfort level of using paints that has changed and I feel like especially in this year I have been experimenting more with my equipment you know when I first get into a medium I don't feel like I'm very observant actually I'm not really a very observant person in general which is kind of weird when you think about it I needed to put more pigment because I just washed it off um, it's kind of weird when you think about it because like should an artist be like really observant people um, but I'm actually really not I don't always notice things right away and when I first started watercolor I was totally fine with cellulose paper I thought it was totally fine um, although I feel like that's how it usually goes like for me at least I don't mind using cheap stuff at first because like that's just the way I've learned for everything it is I think it's good to use less expensive stuff first so you can learn to appreciate the more expensive stuff um, but I actually didn't end up doing that for watercolor. Anyway, back on track. <laughs> um, yeah, when it came to like brushes and paper, I was using cheaper stuff at first for the watercolor, but it's only until now, only until like this year that I started to feel um, frustrated with that and want to explore different papers so now i've been using 100 percent cotton paper and it just works so much easier it just makes the process easier and it takes away some of my frustration that i was feeling and i've also been experimenting with brushes too this is the pyrol rubin which i really like this color um i've been trying to get slightly nicer brushes so i hope i didn't get too much water um so that um, to see if it helps you know I've been using slightly cheaper brushes and I have noticed some irritation from that did I just wash all of that pigment away see I, I have a really hard time focusing when I'm talking wait was that the right color all right let's just wash this away oh that's another thing that has changed dramatically I was like so afraid to wash away the paint because every tiny thing must be used but nowadays I'm not as bothered I'd rather have a clean palette and it all comes down to preference really how you work will be different and your values um, will be different I've seen some people who have very messy um, palettes and they're totally fine with that so Everyone's different. Anyway, it's just interesting to kind of look back at how things have changed. So what I was talking about, like I wanted to try different paper and brushes because I feel like I'd been frustrated by that. I switched to 100% cotton watercolor paper. Um, I've been using mostly cheaper stuff, stuff that you can get kind of in bulk. By the way, yeah, Pyro Rubin. See, isn't that a pretty color? I really like this color. I actually think thought that maybe I could use this for my cool red in my main, you know, little palette. But when I did a little like color chart, doesn't really work. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just use it for pretty colors for now. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly use the cheaper 100% cotton water paper. Like I bought the B the B paper because it was really inexpensive and I wanted to play around with it. Um, and I haven't actually really used that for a piece yet, just for like this, and it seems fine so far. And I've been using the Schminka, not Schminka, I'm sorry, Strathmore, <laughs> the Strathmore Ready Cut um, cotton paper, which is kind of small, the one that I have at least, but I have a lot of it and I don't feel stressed to use it, which I think is one of the most important things. And I'll be experimenting with, I still feel like scared to use my arches. 
<laughs> I don't know about any of you, but bought arches a long time ago. It's not even like the expensive like um, pad where you uh, it's glued on all sides. That one I don't know why that one's so expensive. The the pull the one that's just glued on what on the top and you pull it off. That one's like only like what ten bucks for a pad of like ten papers. But the block that's what it's called the watercolor block where it's glued on all the sides is so expensive like it started making me wonder is the paper quality different than the pad because like why is the price so much more expensive a little tangent on paper for you and i've also been experimenting with different brushes uh so i actually bought a real hair watercolor brush i'm not sure if i talked about that yet anywhere um it was expensive, uh, but not as expensive as I thought it would be. And I don't really have a gradient going here. I should pick up some of this pigment. Um, I only got one, it was really small. That's why it wasn't as expensive as I thought it'd be. <laughs> okay, better stop fussing with that. I'll just put more pigment on top later. Um, but when I first went to use it, I wasn't impressed. I don't know. I don't think I can appreciate it yet. Um, and I also bought some synthetic brushes, which I actually like a whole lot better. I ended up going back to um, Princeton brushes. So far, I've always really enjoyed my Princeton brushes. So I bought some Princeton Heritage and Princeton Aqua brushes, which was a whole thing. <laughs> If you're on my Patreon, you probably know. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on YouTube yet, though. But it was like this whole thing where I was ordering Princeton Aqua brushes, but I got Princeton... Nope. I was ordering Princeton Elite. Those, those are the words. It's Princeton Elite. Sorry, everything I said before where I was saying Aqua is Elite. I was ordering Princeton Elite Aqua brushes, but I was given Princeton Elite brushes. And then I had to um, contact Blake and be like, uh, I think you gave me the wrong brushes. Can do you, do you have the correct brushes? And it turns out they don't. <laughs> they, they never got them. And it was just like, I started to wonder, like, do these things exist anywhere? Because the elite brushes are the old um the old one, like the old version, and the Aqua Elite is the newer version. Uh, uh, but so far, I really, really, really love the Elite brushes. They are really nice. The Heritage brushes are also really nice, but I can't really tell a huge difference. If I'm being honest, I just can't. And when it comes to these um, black velvets, I also can't really tell a huge difference, except that I like them and they work well, just like the other two. But I'm not as huge of a fan of the real hair brush I had bought. Um, I don't know. Maybe in the future I'll like it more. Maybe I just need time to see the difference, just like with the paper as well. Um, yeah, get some lighter color down here. Did I just pick up bread? Where did the bread come from? Probably bleed the tissue. Okay. Okay, stop fussing with that. <laughs> and then I fuss with, okay, stop. It's just swatches. By the way, this is John Brilliant number one, and this one is John Brilliant number two, and I hope I'm saying that right. And I left a gap between these two on the chart. Um, yeah, these swatches are just for me to look at and know what color it is when I'm painting. So they do not have to be perfect, which I have to remind myself. It's kind of fun to swatch though, so it's fun to make them perfect, to be honest. But I actually do get quite a lot of uh, comments on my previous swatching video before, um, even nowadays, which I think is kind of weird. It's weird how YouTube works that way. It's like such an old video will still get comments. 
and I actually get a lot of insults by people who don't like the way I swatch colors <laughs> which to me is so funny because it's like uh it's it's would it is there a swatch police like what the heck <laughs> why are people going around trying to police the way I swatch colors it's just for my reference it's not for anybody else's so it doesn't really matter how I do it and I don't think there's a wrong way to swatch colors you know you know guys you know anyone else think that way too like I never I can't understand the mindset because I've never um gone on someone else's watercolor video and criticized them for doing anything like even if they have a dirty palette and I like clean palettes I don't criticize them for it I just think it's fine it's just the way they do things but yeah my cat is sitting on my foot so I'll be right back okay my cat has been given the proper attention she requires <laughs> so yeah like I was saying um, so if you're bothered by the way I swatch sorry but don't worry about it okay don't worry this one is shell pink these colors are actually from my other palette um, so I just moved them over the pans I took the pans out of my 48 palette and moved them over here because I just I thought it'd be kind of cool since I have so many to give Holbein its own place its own tin its own location but since I was moving them I took the chance to like clean them up because um you know somehow colors just splatter in especially blues those darn blues they splatter into all the light colors don't even know why but I love blue so I can't even complain blue is one of the weakness for me when it comes to picking watercolors like I want to buy all of the dark reds and all of the dark blues forever like those are my favorite ones to go for at least right now but yeah so that was shell pink and this one is brilliant pink so okay back on track so yeah I just popped these tins these these pans out of the bean palette to put in here clean them up a bit I considered adding more watercolor because as you can see there's only the tiniest little nub of color in here <laughs> and that's just because when I bought it it was because I wanted to play around with these skin tone colors and I wasn't sure how much I'd like them and I don't want to pour more than I need this is so dry so um I only poured a little bit that's kind of like when it comes to watercolor in general I don't feel the need to pour like until the whole top is filled like I just find it fine to put a little bit but that's just me like you don't have to be that way you can do what you want <laughs> Because for me, I just, I always paint at home. I don't paint outside, really. I'm way too much of a homebody for that. So I just feel like there's no point to add more because I can just top it up whenever I want to. But I decided not to top them up yet. I'll just wait for now. These colors are so pretty, but they're so milky. like the water becomes so milky afterwards I did get the the John Brilliant colors on kind of a whim I just wanted to see what it was like and I do think it's better to mix your own skin tone but if you do like like straight up anime like in like seriously anime like on tv anime that kind of style like these colors would work really well because they're kind of yellowish um, I don't know it's just very anime skin tone it's not really um, other style skin tone though and when I say skin tone I mean light skin tone but I should get better at the way I talk about skin tone. it's really hard for me to adjust though but I'm trying I'm trying light skin tone peach skin tone is that peach though that's more of a yellowish skin tone huh I don't know let's go back to the colors <laughs> this one is cobalt blue um i do wonder if i should have picked something else instead of the ultramarine for my mini palette but i also feel like ultramarine is like a really solid 
color that a lot of people seem to put into a limited palette so it should be fine the air in this room is just so dry right now that i end up dry brushing these these like i, I just got so so little water i think i added too much just taking a little bit of the water off so yeah cobalt blue going down still a little too much water i think I struggle with that with watercolor as well like um, you know dry time is always a problem when it comes to watercolor but I've noticed that there are some days in my little studio here where the watercolor dries so fast that it's like working with acrylics or something it's ridiculous and other days where it just takes absolutely forever for anything to dry and I don't quite know why that is like, I wonder what the scientific reason is behind it. Is Does anybody know? Uh, is there something I should be looking out for? Because I live in Singapore and it's 99% humidity all the time. So I don't quite get why some days it dries super slow <laughs> and other days it's so fast. Because the, the air and the temperature in the room is always about the same because I'm almost always using air conditioner. Um, it's just too hot where I live not to. Ultramarine deep. It really is. And I get migraines. And one of my trigger is heat. So of course, I had to fall in love with a boy from a hot country and move to live with him. <laughs> that was smart of me. Probably should have tried to fall in love with someone from northern side of the world but oh well <laughs> it doesn't work that way but in a way it's kind of good too because since I moved to Singapore my migraines have just increased like exponentially but I've learned a lot about how to deal with them because of the increase and also what foods trigger it that I might not have noticed in the past. Mm, that might have been a bad idea going on the sides. Like I was, I was like admin that um, chocolate cannot be a cause for migraines when my doctor told me so many years ago back in america i was like no chocolates isn't a cause chocolate's fine don't worry about it <laughs> um but yeah after coming to singapore i can't eat chocolate at all anymore which sucks because uh a lot of places when they they sell sweets they only want to put chocolate in there so I miss out on a lot. I started to really enjoy local flavors though. I started to like, okay, I've been living in Asia, in Singapore for quite a few years now. I don't remember, I think it's like five plus years. And it's taken me until now to start to appreciate red bean flavor. If anybody knows what that is, I think if, if you guys are into Asian culture, you should know what red bean, red bean is. I absolutely hated it at first, but now I'm starting to appreciate it. <laughs> it's interesting to how things change. This one is royal blue. I absolutely had to get this one. It is so pretty. And I am really rambly now. Start talking about food and migraines. Now let's get back to the watercolor. Yeah, um, I had said it before earlier, but my gosh. I am so tempted when it comes to buying new watercolors by the dark blues and the dark reds. They are like the colors I gravitate to. It's kind of funny because I would think that I like purples more because my favorite color is purple. But I don't know, I just, I don't really go for the purples and watercolors much. I guess I feel kind of guilty because, you know, you can mix a purple so well so it feels kind of a waste to buy it. But I still try to buy some 
that especially have like a really unique tone to them like um okay honestly even though i bought all of these colors the other day schminka four damn watercolors were on sale <laughs> online and i was having a really bad migraine so i was just sitting on the couch looking at the website because they actually had a website this this particular art store um, it was on sale in a local singapore art store called overjoyed which also is, by the way not affiliated <laughs> just telling you the names but um i was drooling over their colors and i was thinking should i get something they they haven't been on sale for a while and i don't need more watercolors but i don't feel well so <laughs> it was like that kind of thinking and by the way i resisted i didn't buy any more but there was one particular like purple color that had a reddish hue to it that I thought was really pretty. I don't remember the name of it. It might have been Pyro something. I feel like Pyro was in the name. And honestly, if that one was in stock, I would have bought like two or three tubes. Honestly. <laughs> Straight up, I got a problem. Right now I'm just super into watercolors. So, but look how pretty this royal blue color is. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, it's really pretty. It's like Mayan blue dark, Prussian blue, indigo blue type pretty. Like, love it. Love it. You know, it's funny because indigo blue is, or indigo blue. Why am I saying indigo? Just indigo <laughs> is actually one of my favorite colors, especially like in pencil and stuff. But I don't think I've actually bought one in watercolor yet. Like, uh, I think I got close to it a few times, but they tend to put black in there, so I kind of eh, didn't really want to go for it because I just feel like it'll end up looking kind of dull. I end up going for these more brighter blues instead. But one day maybe I will get an indigo. This one is the Phyllo Blue Yellow shade again. The room is just like everything's drying so quick that I. I'm trying to be careful not to pull, let the colors like touch each other at first, but it seems to be drying so quick that I haven't had any runs yet. And I've just dirtied my clean water. I always do it. <laughs> I'm terrible. I always end up putting my brush in and I'm like, as I'm doing it, I'm instantly going, no, that was the clean water. Why? Well, now it's very blue. I think it should be fine for the rest of the colors. Uh, should I change it though? Mm. I'm not sure. Smooth out, please. I do wonder how much the um, the whole buying paint is in like in Japan. I don't think I've ever seen that. I mean. I've seen sets that were pretty inexpensive and I have seen like Holbein paint on like Amazon Japan uh, website which is always so tempting because like you can buy the individual tubes and they only seem like they're like two or three dollars it's like crazy cheap but then when you add shipping and fees it's like yeah not worth it but I'm kind of curious how much they cost in an actual art store because I know with like with the US you know the Amazon pricing tends to be a little bit more expensive mostly every once in a while they'll have something that's cheaper than an art store but I feel like a lot of times it's more expensive so I wonder what the price is in Japan and how comparative comparable it is to the price in Singapore this one is turquoise blue which I had to get because it's pretty. It's another color that tends to catch my eye in watercolor brands, turquoise colors. Um, but I didn't really pay attention to this one. I was just kind of like, it's pretty. And I threw it into the pile because I was already buying. Um, but this one actually does have a pigment white six in it. So, uh, but it's okay. It's, it's pretty. 
it's just very milky. It's kind of like these colors, they tend to have, I think they all have pigment, pigment white of some type in there. But yeah, it kind of makes me curious because I had seen before where um, I was kind of surprised to see that the price of Copic markers are actually not horribly ex cheaper in Japan compared to um, what I can get them for here in Singapore, which made me happy. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's definitely cheaper. It's just like, it's not like, okay, book me a plane to Japan right now, kind of cheaper. It's like, if I was there, then that'd be great. But otherwise, I'm fine buying it here kind of price. So I'm kind of curious how how the price of paint is for Holbein. Because I feel like the price here is already super, super reasonably cheap. Like, I'm really happy to pay that price. So, so far, it's pretty good. See, that one's so pretty, even though it's a little milky, it's so pretty. Let me get more water because the room's just so dry. Oh, you see that blue? Oh no. Feel the blue in my water. Uh, you know, it is feeling blue. Maybe I should quickly change this. You know, no, it's fine. It's swatching. I don't want to waste water. It's fine. And the rest of the colors have a little blue in it, I'm sure, anyway. Um, this one is marine blue. Oh yeah, I was really excited about this one. And it's a PB16, um, which, by the way, what is phthalo blue made of in this brand? PB15. I feel like I've had PB16 as a phthalo blue in the past. I'm not sure though. I think I have one Schmink of color that's like 15 and 16 together. Um, yeah, marine blue. That's what this is. And this one is super pretty. That's why I had to get it. I actually picked this one up the first time I went, I believe. Um, because it was just so cute. I had to get it. <laughs> um, what I like about it is that it's like a turquoisey color, but it's leaning towards the green, which I don't have a color like that. So I think it's it's something different and really interesting to play around with. Okay. Oh, it's so vibrant too. So pretty. Sometimes it can just be fun to swatch colors. The edges are a little messy, but it's fun. It's not an artwork, it's just the swatch. I'm telling myself, but also you guys, calm down. <laughs> if you don't like the way I swatch, don't worry about it. Uh, this one is Cobalt Blue, or sorry, Cobalt Violet Light. Um, I bought this a while ago. It was like in the other palette too. I like this color. But I also feel like it's strangely kind of milky. Like, it's not horribly milky, but it's strangely kind of milky. And most of these colors re-wet really easily, but I feel like this one, maybe because it's cobalt, um, just takes more coaxing, coaxing to get pigment out. And it does look quite light, even when you do get more pigment out, if you know what I mean. No, oh, no, don't run, don't run. Oh, it ran. That's just going to bother me. So I'm just going to clean it up. Let's wait a few. Okay, I'll just cut here and we'll come back when this is dry. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, it's kind of funny though because these are like my two favorite colors mixing together. <laughs> 
I love purple and I love teal. I actually think they look really nice together. But it's also kind of like weird, like it shouldn't work. But it does. Okay, don't mix again, please. It could be my imagination, but I just feel like this color is pretty milky. I wonder why, because it's just uh, one pigment. You don't list any white in there. And it does look transparent. It doesn't look really milky the way these do, but it's still also kind of milky-ish. I feel like I put too much water up here. up too much water trying to coax the color out I'll just leave it like that hopefully it'll settle in <sighs> so yeah we're getting close to the end just four more four more so just listen to me ramble for four more pans so uh, what colors do you think you would pick if you were going for your own palette and what colors you think was a mistake for me? <laughs> I'm kind of curious. <laughs> it's not easy. Like, I've seen so many videos where people do, like, you know, they set up their own palette and, like, they choose different colors. This one is Crinacrone Violet, by the way, the PV19 I was talking about. Um, and they make it look really easy, but when, for me at least, when I was standing in the store and looking at the catalogs online trying to figure out what colors to pick, oh my gosh. It is definitely not easy. <laughs> Wait, wasn't there supposed to be a gap? Oh yeah, after this, I'll leave this one open and then do the other, okay. But luckily, like these paints are less expensive for me. So I feel like I didn't make any grievous mistakes. Like I'd probably be pretty upset if I bought the wrong yellow for another brand that was like way more expensive for me. This is a, the, the reason I went for this color was partly because, you know, I do enjoy the PV19 and I was kind of curious about a different tone of it um, since they have a different tone compared to the Schmincke one I use all the time. Um, but also because I did think that this color looked like an interesting tone purple. It's like a magenta e purple. But I'm also a little unsure if I already have a color that's similar to this. I might. But I haven't actually looked since I bought it. And even in the store I kind of suspected that I think I have a color that looks kind of exactly like this. Let me check. I have the chart right here. Yeah, this is my big palette. Wow, I actually put a lot more space in between these. <laughs> Filling these up all the way. Um, no, it's nothing like the Quinn Purple I have. Because, like, this is Quinn Acron Violet, this one's Quinn Purple. It looks more magenta, really. Look at that. So, hey, good, good job me. I actually did pick something that's very unique to my overall palette. I should really swatch everything in one big paper so I can have that for reference too. Would, would you guys be interested in watching me swatch like all the colors I have in one big paper or was this enough? You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you don't want to sit through me um, rambling during another swatching video. Let me know. Or maybe I should make like a live stream. Ugh, I keep wanting to live stream and then like I just get so anxious. Like even this video, like I said, I already redid this video a few times because I just felt like I was saying stupid things and I did things wrong. And I, well, this one generally I really did want to rearrange it, but you know. This one is the Raw Sienna. I bought Raw Sienna because I. I do enjoy using the yellow ochre that I have by Schmincke and I wanted to check out other people's yellow ochres because the Schmincke one is really opaque and I think maybe just yellow ochres in general are opaque but I wanted to see if there was one that wasn't as opaque <laughs> um, and I noticed that the Schmincke one or the, the Holbein one looks very very similar to the Schmincke one 
So instead of getting that, I decided to try this raw sienna because I feel like it's a very similar tone to the um, yellow ochre without buying yellow ochre again. Um, so I just I wanted to experiment, and it wasn't too expensive, so I decided let's just let's just try it. Let's just try it. I do feel like it granulates. I guess is it's just very grainy. I think that's granulating. I think it's very granulating. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that for what I was originally purposing it for, which was like skin tones. But it'd be really cool for like sand and like that kind of thing. So something different just to try. Plus I, I think it was burnt sienna I bought and I love that color. I think it was. Where is it? Oh no, burnt umber. Burnt umber. I just love this color. Burnt sienna. Oh yeah. It's not it's not the best. I don't use this much. But I love this color so much, my burnt umber. I use this a lot actually. I usually put a little bit of like yellow or red to it to just kind of give it a different tone. Um, and because I love that color so much, I got this one, which is imidalazone brown, which I got partially because I was like, oh, it's another imidalazone color. I don't know what pigment that is, but it just sounds so interesting. I never heard of it before. <laughs> so I was kind of curious to get it just for that fact, but I also noticed it was like a really nice rich brown and like, I just love my other rich brown on my other palette. So I wanted to grab it and like to see if um, hopefully the tone is a bit different from the other one I have. So it'll be useful, like, you know, for doing outfits, like leathery type looks or just like, yeah, I guess leathery type looks. I just feel like it's a really pretty, um, it's really, really nice. I don't know why I'm saying really pretty. It's really nice to have that kind of color on hand without having to mix it. Although I am trying to get more into mixing and exploring what colors can do. But there are certain times where it's like, even if I mix it, I'm just going to um, shoot. I just mixed all the pigment off. Um, I'm going to just like not get it right the second time. And of course you would get better with practice, but sometimes you just need to get the color on the paper and move on. <laughs> sometimes convenience colors are nice. I'm kind of curious how this compares to the other brownish colors I have. Okay, smooth out, smooth out. Actually, it's probably pointless to be wiping this way. It won't show later anyway. Okay, get enough, walk away. So yeah, I'm kind of curious. Hopefully it's not the same tone. No, it's not. It's a lot reddish, a lot more reddish. It's, it's kind of more like this English Venetian red by Schwinka, except like way less opaque. It's like if you took the opaqueness out of here, you get this color is how I feel. That's pretty interesting. That's really interesting. I think I'll definitely be using that. I should probably like Google Imidalazone and see what what kind of like pigment or rock or something that is. This one is the last color and this one I actually remember somebody had like mentioned this before in the past and I just I, I told myself to try to find it but I never remembered to do it and it was only after I was like really scouring the whole buying uh, catalog uh, online and trying to like see what the colors are and pick out what I like that I realized that this was here. This one is PBK1, that's the pigment, and it's called Peach Black. And I'd heard somebody mention that it's like a really nice dark black. So I had to get it. I love, I love black watercolor. I know it's taboo. We're not supposed to like black watercolor. We should just use ink or something, but I love black watercolor. I love it more than ink. It's so much easier to control. And although you can mix your own, which is supposed to be the way you do it, I just, I prefer the richness and density of the pre-made ones. 
because I like that inky look without having to work with the ink. But so far I've been disappointed by the blacks that I have. Um, like the lunar black just granulates so much so I can't take it. It just doesn't do what I want. And um, my favorite is ivory black, but it does have a bit of a brownish tone to it, which I'm not really fond of. It's just, it's just like the tiniest hint of brownish color. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. So when I saw this, I was like, definitely worth a try. And I instantly feel like it's a really nice color. I haven't actually used it in a painting, but it looks really nice because it does have, it doesn't have that um, brownish tone from the ivory black but it also doesn't look like it granulates as heavily as the lunar black. I should probably compare it. Yeah, see? The tone is different. It does granulate a little bit, which I don't love. I might still like the ivory black better, but it's way better than lunar black. <laughs> like, just way better. I thought I enjoyed granulating colors, but turns out I actually don't as much like some of them some granulation is fine but like to this level is just actually not what I want for a lot of things I mean there's still some things that it works for but not a lot so yeah that's my little palette I'll have to put in the little names um, once it's dried because like like I have here so I know what everything is but that is my my little whole blind palette I can't wait to get started with these, play around with them, and like see the extent of what I can do with this limited palette as well. Hopefully it works out really good. I think I made good choices for the colors that I picked, um, and hopefully they mix really well, and I'll have a lot of fun with that in my sketchbook in the future. And I feel like after I play around with these colors, I wanna go back to my, my bigger palette and pick out six colors from here that I already have and experiment with that too because I just feel like I feel like I want to experiment with a lot of stuff in the future when it comes to color combinations and playing around with watercolor so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you did not mind my rambling too much if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up leave me a comment down below all that stuff and um yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time bye